then uh, they can jump on later. Um, so today I was going to talk about growing an organic audience um, on your social media platforms. And we're going to talk a little bit about um, organic reach, um, touch a little bit on the, I always talk about algorithms, but I don't think I ever actually gave you guys um, a definition or explanation as to what that is or how that works. Um, and then we're going to go through 10 different ways to increase your reach. And then we'll do a little Q&A where we can talk about anything from these slides to anything that you're having troubles with. So a little quote from Zuckerberg is the thing that we are trying to do at Facebook is just help people connect and communicate more efficiently. And honestly, that's what we're trying to do as real estate agents as well through these social platforms is just trying to connect and communicate more efficiently. Um, we're basically taking the old school networking ways of meeting at the bar and whatnot and taking it online. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is what is organic reach? Um, so organic reach is a metric um, used in social media marketing that shows the number of unique accounts that have seen a post post content on a social media platform. What does that mean? So basically, it's who is looking at your stuff, um, you know, who's seeing you every day, who's engaging with you every day, and how are you, um, how many people are, you know, interested, so interested in what you're doing that they are starting to friend you and starting to get into your actual network. Um, we're going to mostly talk about Facebook today. However, you can take this strategy on to um, any of the other platforms, onto Instagram, onto LinkedIn, um, any way that any other platform that you want to use. Um, sorry, I have two screens, so if I look like I'm like out of control, it's because I kind of am. So <laughs> just don't mind me. Um, when we talk about um, when we talk about the algorithm that I'm always talking about, um, basically what the algorithm is, is that Facebook shows the user, a, any individual user only the content that is most engaging and then drops everything else. So if you have on average, so let's say on average, a user, so you or I goes on to Facebook on, on average during the day, you're subject to over 1,500 posts from other people. So there's a, you could have 1,500, usually more, but that's the average posts that could come up in your feed every single day. Out of that 1,500, only about 300 actually will, you will actually see that. So the rest of it is just like, basically for other people to see. Um, the reason that they do that is because they want to make sure they're giving up the platform where you can be most engaged and they want to make sure that the stuff that you're seeing is interesting to you so you stay on there so what you'll start to see is if heather for instance um if you start to look at my stuff and you start to engage with me talk to me like it you know whatever you'll start to see my stuff more than you would maybe somebody that's just you're scrolling through. Um, so the way the algorithm works is by putting, they first start to put your posts into a very small pool. And then if that, if they start to get any kind of engagement clicks or anything off of it in that pool, it then goes out to a little bit of a bigger pool. Same thing happens and it just keeps going and going and going. So that's basically how you'll have people that, you know, go viral is that it just started in this little pool and so many people started clicking on it and engaging with it, sharing it and sending it out and it just kept escalating from there. So the more engagement you get, the further out you're gonna go. So when uh, choosing your platform, again, we're mostly talking about Facebook today. However, I have a lot of people who have success on other platforms. You really want to, you don't need to be on everything at one time. And I don't suggest that you do that either because in reality, like we're all trying to sell real estate. We're not all social media experts. Um, so we're not going to have time to go on to, you know, YouTube and Instagram and LinkedIn and Twitter and this and that and the other. So where are your people hanging out? Like really just take a quick inventory 
of where your clients are hanging out, where your sphere is hanging out, where, you know, where do you want to be? Um, a lot of our clients, our database is on Facebook. So I'm on Facebook and I will put things on Instagram that will go directly to Facebook. That way I can hit two at once. I'm not taking the extra time though to go on Twitter because honestly, like my demographic and my, my database is not on Twitter. So I don't really do that right now. Um, as our systems are getting put together more and more and they're getting better and scalable, then we can start moving on to other platforms. But maybe like you're a total video person and you want to do blogs, focus on that, you know, just stick to one thing and then kind of escalate from there. Oh. Can't mute anybody on here, so I'm not really sure what that noise is. So sorry. Uh, okay, so we're gonna go into the 10 steps here. So the first one is to optimize your profile. Um, every aspect of your social media profile can be tweaked for better visibility and optimization. So what does that even mean? Um, we want to, when you have your profile on Facebook, you want to make sure that you have an easy to remember name. You want to have a recognizable photo or brand logo or both, or, you know, if you're going to do everything on your personal side, you know, um, we want to be keyword rich in descriptions that sound natural. So if you're going in and you're putting in your bio section and you're like, I'm a um, luxury real estate agent in Worthington. Okay, what can we do to build that up? So you can say, you know, Worthington mom specializing in luxury real estate or, um, you know, I'm a hockey mom specializing luxury real estate in Worthington. Like tell something about yourself, tell something about what you do, tell something about your niche. So you can kind of like just S, just expand on that and make it more um, colorful and make it more user friendly or like relatable. Um, and then you want to have a trackable link back to your yeah. website, back to wherever you want to funnel people to. So I have everybody going to my website. So on my profile, I've got my website link and I also have my app link for the KW app. So no matter where I, where somebody is finding my information, they're always going back to there. So you want to optimize your profile in order to keep people on your page. Um, use emojis, use, um, you know, any cool pictures you can find, like make it interesting because if somebody stays on there more than 10 seconds, they're probably going to stay on there repeatedly. Um, if it's boring, they're not going to stay on there or if they can't relate to it. Um, next one is to um, use evergreen content. And by evergreen, I mean content that doesn't have an expiration date. So you're going to have posts, seasonal posts for Christmas, for 4th of July, different things like that, um, sprinkled into your evergreen posts. But for evergreen, we want to be solving a common problem. Um, it can be something that's funny. It can be, you know, a positive quote. It can be something um, like this one that I have right here that I, I posted on here is just about a date night that I had at Gallows. That's not going to expire. Um, you know, people like food. People want to know where to go. Um, it's not during Christmas time, so you don't have like all of like the seasonal decorations, things like that. This is something that somebody could see any day, any time, any year, doesn't expire. Um, and then a really big part of this is the fact that like people share positive content far more than negative. And I know sometimes that can be a little bit hard to believe because people like to read the negative stuff. Um, but I think overall, and I mean, it's been proven overall that people are gonna share positive content. So put stuff out there that you would want to read and you would want other people to read and share. Like I didn't put like for gallows, I didn't put in here like worst food I've ever had, so gross, never going back or anything. Like I wouldn't do that. Um, I'm definitely going to put in some better stuff. <laughs> so uh, next step is to work smarter, not harder. And I just put this um, little picture here of that moment when you realize you've posted 16 times today. 
it's happened and what is it actually doing for you. Um, again, that quote, that little bit right here on average, a user is subject to over 1500 posts a day and only about 300 actually show up in their feed. Take that into consideration. It's not about how many times you post, it's about what you're posting. And they do say between two and four posts a day is pretty much it. Um, I do three and that's done pretty well for me. And I just do different topics for each one consistently. Um, so I'll do like a work topic and then I'll do a personal topic. And then I might do like a community topic. So like, just like I posted about gallows, like something like that. Um, those are feeding into three different types of um, viewers and it's, they're actually engaged posts and not just posting to post like, I'm not posting, I'm not looking outside my window right now, posting a picture of traffic three times today complaining about it. Does that make sense? So we wanna work smarter, not harder. Um, the next one is targeting. And obviously with uh, you know, our, our current situation in the world, um, one that's a little bit more sensitive, um, but typical targeting can be gender, relationship status, education level, age, location, language, and interests. This does not mean that we're going in there going, all the single ladies, come on, come on. Like what you're doing is you're going to build your content based off of who you want to target. So maybe if you have like, you want, you're doing a single ladies event and you want to do like content based off of that, come up with a strategy to, that would entice them to want to see that more. Don't just be putting people in like different sections and just being like, well, you know, you're a female, so hey, females, read this. Like, you've got to be a little bit more broad about that. However, by targeting, you're able to bring in the yes, it's beautiful. Yes. Okay. Alyssa, can you mute yourself? <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. You're fine. I want to see that dress now. Um, <laughs> Tracy Chambers. Okay. <laughs> But yeah, by targeting, you're able to draw in an audience that's going to be more like you, that's going to want to see your stuff. So um, my targeting is around like um, hockey, my hockey community, hockey moms, um, Wilson, Wilson Hill community, that's my kid's school. So anything that might, anybody that might have interest in that type of stuff, <coughs> hashtags and whatnot to try to draw those people in a little bit more. Um, so it's definitely not like profiling, um, but it's just do, doing str uh, strategic marketing around your targeting. I just lost my clicker here. Hold please. Okay. Next one is your posting times. Um, there's been a lot of uh, discussion about this lately because it used to really be more popular to post during the busy times because you think that more people are reading it and I mean, the, the philosophy was more people are reading it, post during the busy times, this is when everybody's on anyway. That, after a lot of number running lately uh, from Facebook has completely switched over. Um, so the new strategy now is just to not post during the noisy times because you're getting buried. Um, so typical peak hours are first thing in the morning and later in the evening. Um, the suggestion now is that if you really wanna get those engaged posts and not just post to post, to post later in the morning or early in the evening because there aren't as many people on. So you have more of an opportunity to get in front of those people, have those people engage, and then you're going to get pushed into those bigger pools as the day goes on and as, as more people are in there um, participating. So we wanna avoid the content hurricane um, and not get swept up in that. So the next one is the type of content. And I didn't put any verbiage in here because you all already know, video is king. Um, I can't tell you enough how much video is king. People, especially now, especially now, they're used to webinars, they're used to Zoom conference calls, they're used to doing um, Zoom appointments. So video is not strange to people anymore to be see like seeing you on there, it's just normal for them. So they'll click and see what you have to say. Um, my suggestion on that, 
is don't be boring. <laughs> so you can do market stats in a way that um, engages with people. You can do live Zooms. You can do uh, Facebook Lives. They now have the Facebook Rooms. There's lots of different ways that you can um, take advantage of video and turn that into just a regular lead gen opportunity for yourself. Um, and as you can see this, this was something that was kind of interesting to me. And these are, these are older, like this is, this is 2014 to 2015, um, but it's the same today. I just couldn't find the newer stat that I had yesterday for some reason. Um, but photo is actually underneath links now. Um, because I think that the photos have just become so heavy on Facebook and people want to see the videos that people are cool going to links and going to YouTube videos now too. So next up we have promote. Um, this is super important if you want to grow organically because you need to get your name out there. So you want to promote everywhere and ways that you can do this are using buttons and links for your email and website um, and then cross promoting between your uh, website, your uh, Instagram, your KW app, all of that kind of stuff. You need to make sure that you have your information easy to find in one place on all of these places on all of these different platforms funneling into one area. So if you want people to be drawn over to your Facebook page, you need to put a button for Facebook on every single thing, your email, Instagram, everything so that people will be funneled into there. Eighty twenty. we talked about this last time. Um, a big thing with engagement is that you don't want to be posting all business because it's it gets boring. Um, people will click on a really cool link for a house if they like the first picture or if they like the beginning of the video, um, but they're not going to do it every single time. Um, so keep in mind that 80% you want it to be value, humor, interesting, something relatable, something that they may want to actually talk about. Um, right now, a big thing that we've been getting huge engagement on in our Facebook groups is, you know, we just put out a question. So, hey, you know, what do you guys think is going to happen with school next year? And then you'll get like 100 comments underneath. Or, you know, what are your plans if school is part time? Like who's who out there is doing daycare or who this, who that? That's a mom's group thing that I have. But there's I mean, you could take that above and beyond. Who's been out to a restaurant? Um, hey, I just went to this restaurant. We checked this out. Look at the, how they're doing the seating. Just something cool and interesting that is gonna draw people's attention in. And then you can sprinkle in the business stuff um, in there with like your listings, your open houses and whatnot. Um, the biggest part, like, and this should have been number one in my opinion, but the biggest part about growing is you're going to be engaging yourself. Um, so you cannot, it's just like if you're out there looking for business, um, it's not always going to come to you. You need to go get it right. So you need to schedule as part of your lead generation time or part of your schedule during the day, um, time to be going in and actually talking on other people's um, posts and other people's profiles. So you need to go in and comment on that um, gorgeous dress that Tracy Chambers has on right now, like if she's got a photo of it or um, comment <laughs> on, you know, like the, if somebody else asks a question, comment on it or just say, hey, been there too. Like, how are you doing? Start up a conversation and then you can turn that into more a phone call later, a DM, um, anything. So you need to take about 15, 20 minutes a day and really go in and engage and build that bond um, without being a know-it-all. I think that's the biggest thing. Like a lot of people want to go in and they're like, well, here's my two cents on this. Da, 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 da. Choose your words wisely, give value, but don't be bossy. Um, and then those people are going to continue to engage with you and then their friends are going to them engaging with you and they're going to see your content and then they're going to start to like you and then you're going to build your audience that way. So that was kind of a really quick run through and I'll send the slides out to everybody. Um, who has questions about building your audience or issues you've been having recently or anything like that? Don't be shy. <laughs> I have a question. Oh, oh. sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> um, uh, so like from a uh, team account perspective, 
um, you end up have, we end up having like social media accounts that get bombarded with people that just aren't our clients. You have lenders and you have title companies and you have random agents from like, you know, South Carolina who just want to continue to follow you. Um, and so it's in terms of engaging, it's hard from a team perspective, I would think, or somebody managing a team account to, to engage because we're so bombarded with all of these accounts. And as one individual, we don't know all of, you know, from a team perspective, I don't know all of these people and I would love to engage and love to comment on their things. Um, but I'm having a hard time filtering out these lenders and, and where I want to give my energy. Um, because again, I, I don't know who's a client and who's, you know, who I should be commenting to. So what do you have any advice on, maybe engaging from a team account. Yeah, let me pull this up real quick um, and I can show you, hopefully I can do this without losing everybody. Can you still see my screen? Okay. Are you still able to see my screen or is it gone now? Yeah, I can see okay, it. I'm muted, so. Okay. So Go to our team page. And Kate, that's a really good question because I think a lot of people run into this as well. Um, waiting, waiting, waiting. Okay, so like what I would usually do is when people, and you can see here, I mean, it's just stuff is getting buried just because it's that whole other business versus personal. Um, something that you can do, the first thing I was going to say isn't going to work in this example, but um, you can go into your followers right here and click on that. And then you should be able to just pull up, of course, this isn't going to work. Okay, I lied. I'll have to get with you offline about that one. Um, the biggest thing that we can do in this case is to just go in and just um, whenever somebody is responding to something just go in there and make sure you respond back to them whether it is an agent or not um, when you get the agents and you get the lenders you can actually put them in a separate list so that they're coming up um, underneath that list and then that way you can kind of if you don't want to respond to them you don't have to um, but i can get with anybody that's on a team separately and do a little a quick webinar on that because um, it takes a little bit of time to go through um, and then i was also going to show you how to kind of go through your followers and be able to like split them up and prioritize them so i'll show you guys how to do that too either in another class or um, anybody that's on a team we can do that offline Anybody else? Yeah, mine was um, more towards like, I really like how you put, um, don't put all biz on there. Now, I don't know if that's the same pertaining to our page, the consultants, um, but I find that a lot of the stuff I post like is, is are things that are going on in the office, um, business um, tips or business things, and also like birthday shout outs and cappers and all that. But I think um, the goal is to get more followers. And what can we do like to grab somebody's attention? And um, like some of the slides I saw that you had, it, I would stop and read it just because of the picture. Um, just so any advice for our page, um, just some exciting, funny, fun things I could post. I so I do think a lot of that you guys are posting on that already is exciting and fun. Um, uh, the, the big keys to an off, like office life is going to be, you know, like a daily, something daily in the office that's fun. So like, I remember there was one day where like a couple people were dressed alike or something like that. Like posting that kind of stuff is great. Um, I okay. think like any type of slide or um, 
you know, uh, once we get back into the office, like showing that whole community. Um, the biggest, the biggest purpose of the office um, Instagram and Facebook platforms is to recruit, right? Right. So right. our target audience are going to be agents. And so mm -hmm. what we'll do is when you go in there, you can take your 15, 20 minutes a day that you're able to set aside for that and go in and start liking and go in and start friending all of those like agents that are in the area. So okay. once you following all of them, then they're going to start seeing your content, start going in and like talking to them and say, hey, um, the biggest, the easiest thing that you could do from an office perspective is just go in and when an agent has a closing, just say, hey, congratulations, that's awesome, great job, you know, whatever, just make sure that you're kind of engaging with them. Got but it. your overall are cute. Like, I think that they're eye-catching and you're doing a good job. Good. Thanks. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Thanks, Ashley. Yeah, um, and that's another thing that when when you're going in to do your lead gen or you're going in to do your engagement time, like if you go on Instagram or Facebook and you just start friending people, like you can't do it spammy or you'll actually get blocked because I've, it's happened to me before. Um, wasn't trying to be spammy, was just trying to go in and get some more friends and they blocked me. So, um, but if you go in and maybe add like 10 people a day, and if you're targeting agents or you're targeting you know, people in a mom's group, so say like you're in a, or a community group, so you're in a, uh, the Westerville buy, sell, trade group, like you can go in there and friend those people. Um, they may not friend you back, but if you have people in common, like you can friend each other. And then, um, you know, that's just even more people that will be looking at your stuff and that you can engage with later. Um, groups are a great place to start because once you're in the group, you can friend However, 2,500, 3,000 people are in that group. Um, again, don't do it spammy because like they know, like if you're like friending all these people in a group, like Facebook will automatically be like, no, you're done. Um, <clears throat> but that's a great way to start building those networks out as well. Thank you so much, Ashley. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Anybody else? You got a couple minutes left. All right, cool. Um, well, I will, um, if you guys want the slides, go ahead and just put your email address in the chat box. I will get those sent over to you. Um, sorry, it was a little wonky today. My screens were messed up, but I uh, am happy to help you all offline anytime that you need. Um, just let me know and I uh, hope you guys have a good day. Thank you, Ashley. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. See you soon. Oh, I'm enjoying this too much.